Thank you, thank you, respected chairperson, and thank you, PSG team, for giving me the opportunity for helping the this conference. My topic is today is the case on the isolated post breakfast hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Am I audible? Yes, yes. The case is the patient named Rekha, 29 year female, gravida 3, parative, live birth 1, history of 6 months, amenorrhea came for routine checkup. Gestational is 26 weeks, 4 days, married since 9th year. Uh, gestation when she had a boy, 8 years, and in second gestation, she had LSCS that the girl and the third she is having pregnancy presently diagnosed with GDM. Family history, father is diabetic, general examination is normal, seven and at the presentation RBS was 160, then 75 gram OGTT was done and two hours post because load was 188 and her HB1C was 6.8. Patient was advised for MNT for one week by the gynecologist then after one week she had FBS of 90 and uh, post uh, prandial 164. She was started on pre mix insulin 30 76 unit before breakfast along with MNT, MNT and advice for self monitoring of blood glucose. And she was educated also with the insulin dose titration according to blood sugar. After two weeks, her FBS 82 and post prandial after breakfast is two hours was 116. After one month, her FBS 78 and PPBS two hours 112 and her HPNC came down to 6.1. And what is hyperglycemia is one of the most common medical disorders seen in women during pregnancy. IDF estimates that one in six live births are to women with some form of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. Uh, this is a slide we all know about the types of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. I will go quickly through all these slides. And the incidence GDA prevalence has been reported to vary between 1 to 28 percent in different regions. 10 to 25 percent of these may be due to diabetes in pregnancy, while the majority is related to GDM. These are the risk factors we all know. Maternal glucose regulation, tendency to maternal hypoglycemia between meals lead to increased fetal demand, resulting in increased diabetogenic placental steroid, increased estrogen and progesterone, increased HPL, and that lead to increased insulin production. When maternal hyperglycemia occurs, there is fetal pancreas stimulated, fetal hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance syndrome occur, which result in fetal growth and fetal well-being. The why to bother about DM, uh, diabetes mellitus, uh, then with fetal concern, spontaneous abortion, congenital anomalies, macrosomia, neonatal prematurity, pre perinatal asphyxia, mortality, respiratory distress, hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, polycythemia, jaundice and long term complication are diabetes, obesity and neurodevelopment outcome. Maternal outcome, PIH and preeclampsia. These are the recommendations. First, prenatal visit in those with risk factors. GDM at 24 to 28 week of gestation in women not previously known to have diabetes. Screen women with GDM for persistent diabetes at 4 to 12 weeks postpartum using the OGTT. If GDM is not diagnosed, Repeat 24 to 28 weeks or at any time patient has the symptoms or signs of suggestive hyperglycemia. Detection and diagnosis of GDM. Women with GDM history should have lifelong screening for development of diabetes or prediabetes at least every three years. Women with GDM having uh, history found to have prediabetes should receive lifestyle intervention and met metformin to prevent diabetes. This is screening procedure. We follow one step strategy in which 75 gram OGTT and uh, glucose was measured at fasting one hour and two hour. Uh, this will all know. And this is the self monitoring glucose, uh, is the cornerstone of diabetes in gestational uh, diabetes mellitus. ADA guidelines for pregnant patients requiring insulin. Uh, SMBG should be monitored uh, more than thrice a day and which frequently in morning uh, fasting, pre-meal and one hour postprandial and before bed. These are the targets. Uh, patients with DDM preprandial meal less than 95 and patients with pre-exiting uh, type 1 DM or type 2 pre-meal bedtime in overnight glucose that is 60 to 99 and postprandial after one hour less than 140 and two hours less than 120. And in pre-existing type 1 or type 2 peak postprandial glucose was 100 to 129. 
these are the management approaches uh, early referral to a specialist is essential collaborative effort among obstetrician midwife endocrinologist of thalmologist all team members should be engaged in patient education prior to throughout the pregnancy and individualized treatment plan involving combination of glucose monitoring medical nutrition therapy pharmacotherapy exercise weight management strategy and psychological support Uh, when mnt in diabetic in pharmacological therapies is when mnt alone fails pharmacological therapy is indicated as guideline recommend insulin as the optimal approach insulin therapy is required for the treatment of type 1 dm during pregnancy metformin and the glyphosate are the two most commonly prescribed oral anti hyperglycemic agents during pregnancy post prandial hyperglycemia it plays a more important role in causing fetal overgrowth data suggests that Post uh, PPG levels more closely related to macrosomia risk compared to FPG level. Based on studies in preterm birth, renal threshold for glucose in the fetus is probably less than 110 milligram per deciliter. When metal glucose more than 110 milligram per deciliter, the fetal blood glucose load causes fetal glycosuria and consequently a glucose enriched amniotic fluid. After 20 weeks of gestation, the fetus begins to swallow the amniotic fluid. In addition to the placental transfer of glucose, ingested high glucose amniotic fluid also stimulates the insulin secretion. Thus, even transient elevation of blood glucose on the maternal side not only results in elevation of blood glucose on the fetal side, but also provides for glucose ingestion by the fetus for many hours. Thus, postprandial hyperglycemia for less than one hour once a day in the mother produces fetal insulin stimulus through the oral route for hours. Elevation of maternal glucose level. More frequently, may produce a more long oral glucose load in fetus, resulting in overfed fat fetus. These are the associations between P P P G at different time of point and mode of delivery. Patient undergoing operative delivery had significant higher P P G values from seventy five to one thirty five minutes. Association uh, higher newborn birth weight was noted in women with significantly higher P P G value from forty five to one fifty minutes. And these are the higher diabetes associated complication were noted in women with significantly higher PPG values from 75 to 105 minutes. There is also a study between one hour glucose challenge test values and perinatal outcomes. This study suggests that the uh, subject between 140 to 149 blood sugar uh, postprandial have adjusted ratio was more than one. which suggests that it has associated with a higher composite perinatal outcome large gestation age babies and macrosomnia another study with postprandial versus preprandial blood glucose monitoring in women with gdm requiring insulin therapy in this 66 women with gdm required insulin therapy at 30 weeks of gestation or earlier the women were randomly assigned to uh, assigned to have their diabetes managed according to the results of preprandial monitoring or Postprandial monitoring of blood glucose concentrations, and the study results indicate that in postprandial maternal group, the infant birth weight was lower. The infant born to the woman in postprandial monitoring group had a lower rate of neonatal hypoglycemia, less often large for gestational age, and were less often delivered by cesarean section because of cephalopelvic disproportion, and then compared to the preprandial monitoring group. The conclusion is that uh, adjustments of insulin therapy in women with gestational diabetes, according to the results of postprandial rather than their preprandial blood glucose, improves glycemic control, decreases the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia and macrosomia. Result of this study support the hypothesis that PPG monitoring in combination with fasting glucose measurement can significantly improve the outcome of pregnancy in women with gestational diabetes who require insulin therapy. Another study in which women with gestational diabetes, thirty thirty three women, those who had PPG control indicated by lower HbA1c levels, gave birth to babies with lower weight, lower risk of neonatal hypoglycemia, and were less likely to undergo cesarean section compared to thirty three women randomly assigned to fasting plasma glucose control. Weight gain during pregnancy, gestational age, at the diagnosis of diabetes. and at delivery degree of compliance with therapy and degree degree of achievement of target glucose concentration was similar in these two groups the diabetes in early pregnancy st study group showed that high birth weight was closely related with the third trimester postprandial glucose levels 
it recruited insulin dependent diabetic and control women before conception provide an opportunity to address the relationship between maternal hyperglycemia and percentile birth weight data were analyzed from 323 diabetic and 361 control women fasting and non fasting weanness plasma glucose were measured glycosylated hemoglobin was measured weekly in the first trimester and monthly thereafter more infants of the diabetic women were at or above 90% there for birth weight than infant of control women better glycemic control in patients with gdm was associated with reduced risk of neonatal hypoglycemia dimar dimarini at all studied two groups of pregnant women with different target level of ppg and infants in strict group control had a significantly lower rate of hypocalcemia than infant in the customary control group there is also one study which showed that postprandial hyperglycemic control during gestation diabetes pregnancy predicts the recurrence this we can see in the figure that the figure trend substantial no substantial difference between with uh, women with or without gdm recurrence regarding the preprandial glucose level among women with gdm recurrence the postprandial glucose levels were higher throughout the gestations by controlling the ppg level we may reduce the risk of gdm recurrence interventional studies are required to evaluate whether this is indeed a modifiable risk factor or it is a marker of a more severe insulin resistance either way those women should be monitored carefully and strategies for gdm prevention should be impl implemented on this high risk population postprandial glucose could be reduced using intensive diet hypoglycemic drug treatment for diet control gdm women it was found that a home based cycling program helps to maintain the daily ppg levels overall by using a strict uh, glucose monitoring with lower target values along with the recommendation of avoid long inter pregnancy interval and reduce weight physicians may reduce the chance of gdm recurrence and consequently may reduce the chance of type 2 diabetes for some women ppg management in pregnancy in diabetic pregnant women those requiring insulin controlling ppg has resulted in better glycemic control than controlling fasting plasma glucose controlling postprandial blood glucose values further reduces the chances of neonatal hypoglycemia as we discussed macrosemia and cesarean delivery after two hour post meal blood glucose monitoring is suggested by shishya et al although different studies advocate varied intervals of 1 hour 1.5 hours and 2 hours indian guideline further recommend that management of gdm should encompass medicinal nutrition therapy oral hypoglycemic drugs and insulin physical activity in pregnant women with diabetes has shown to assist in achieving better glucose levels ada recommend walking for 10 minutes after each meal to improve ppg control significantly in such patients evidence suggests that strict ppg control in patient with gdm correlates with lower risk of macrosomia neonatal hypoglycemia neonatal hypocalcemia with reduced chances to undergo cesarean surgery strict control in third trimester has the most potent effect on fetal body weight furthermore physical activity also helps to reduce ppg levels these are the recommendations uh, for control of postprandial glucose in pregnancy ppg rather than fpg should be used to guide management in pregnant women with gdm requiring insulin therapy post meal monitoring should be performed 2 hour after meal intake all gdm patient should receive nutritional counseling metformin along or with supplement with supplementation with insulin is preferred premix to be initiated at 4 units before breakfast and to be increased by 2 units till 10 units rapid acting uh, insulin analogs should be considered if ppg is still uncontrolled these are the various type of insulins we can use in diabetes in pregnancy uh, the short acting ultra short acting are aspart ispro there is regular and nph and datemir thank you